and uh, has to be hardened against that so that it could come back up. And that was just the line of the thing. All right, all the breakouts have now been started. If people want to jump to their breakouts, we've got three of them. You know, just you have to leave this meeting and then you go back to the lobby and then you select which one you go to. And then there you go. We're getting it down. Can't you just pick, pick the meeting room from here, Joe? <sighs> Wouldn't that be so nice? Well, you know what? We're working. Yeah, I guess I could post the links in. I just see. I know. All right. All right. All right, Tim, your host. Cool. So you should have all power. It's already recording. You don't need to do anything at the end other than stop record. Uh, just end. You should you should now see end. Yes. So you can give people power to share screen, do what the things they need. Um, you don't need to do it again. When you hit end, it'll automatically load the uh, recording into our thing. So nothing you have to do other than make sure you end it or it'll just keep going. Um, and there you go. It's all yours. All right, sounds good. Jesse House, how are you doing? So good to see you. Yeah, hey, I know that guy. Oh, how great is that? That was a nice, nice, nice surprise. Okay, not that I, I mean, I love the rest of you too. But Jesse, how are you doing? All right, let's see. Okay, bye. I know Jesse's the one that here in Jersey that counts, you know. So, hi, I've, team. Hi, Matt. Hey, G, time. how are you? Good. good. Hi, hey, Mark. Good morning. All right, we got Cody and Ray. All right. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having us. This is our right. first time presenting at HETMA. We just uh, came on board with the sponsorship back at Infocom um, in Vegas. So just yes. trying to figure out the organization and how we can be more helpful and impactful to higher education across the country. And I'm just glad to be here today to join you guys and show you a few slides. Yeah, we are glad you guys are, are here. Uh, you know, let me see if I can I if I do if I pin or spot like I pin you guys. Let me see if I can. Oh, no, nope, that won't do. No, nope, let me flip that back. Let's see if I do. Oh, wait, hold on. Cancel. And I'll just be able to share my screen like a standard. Oh, Zoom. Uh, yeah, let me go here. Move that pen. And we're going to do, all right, so go participants. Uh, oh, see, that's interesting. All right, so I'll give you co host because then Ooh, you, can, yeah. you should be able we'll to figure it out. There you go. If uh, for some reason my video starts to get choppy or cut out, just let me know. I am uh, on the road sitting at a gas station in Iowa City. So tis the life of a road warrior. And we adapt and do what we have to do whenever we have to do it. So You're not snowed in in Iowa City? <laughs> no, it is not. Um, about 50 miles north of here, I think, is where the ice cutoff was. So I-80 Okay, is I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm just a little about an hour south of Minneapolis and we're very snowed in. <laughs> yeah, I bet you. How much did you end up getting? Uh, so, so far, uh, about, or so far around a foot. Did you really? Uh, well, um, I was supposed to be up there in it this week, but my original itinerary was canceled, probably thankfully. I was going to be in Minneapolis Monday and Tuesday, and then Madison, and then Des Moines, and that all kind of got pushed to the side when we started to see the weather reports, and, and that's probably for the best. So I've modified it a little bit, and I'm headed out to Des Moines now. Uh, I'm going to go see Simpson College and a couple other colleges and universities out there, and then head back home. So um, I do appreciate you joining. Just a quick introduction. My name's Cody Parkhouse. I am one of several Epson education field reps that we have. Uh, we're located all across the country, and it's our main goal to basically build that relationship between Epson the manufacturer and you as the end user of our products. Um, our main day-to-day -day job is, you know, doing roadmaps, talking about products, um, introducing new products, sending demo gear, helping spec rooms and, and build outs, and then helping with service and support on the backside. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't sell anything direct to our end users. We rely on our vast partner network to be able to do that. Um, but 
you know, it's, it's worked really well for us and we're dedicated to you. Ray is also joining me here. Ray, if you want to say a few words. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Cody. And uh, thanks. Uh, uh, looking forward to uh, the session here and uh, getting more familiar with Hetma as well. So I'm Cody's counterpart um, based down in uh, Dallas, Texas, and uh, cover five states for us down in the uh, southwest. So uh, appreciate the opportunity to, excuse me, to join you guys. We also have uh, Mr. Michael Cho joining us. He's one of our senior technical sales engineers. Um, so we've asked him to join on and uh, just you know hang out and answer any harder questions that Ray and I might not be able to do. So, Mike, I don't know if you want to say anything. I know I butchered the title. It's probably wrong. You're, it's whatever. No, that's no problem. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I used to be the, the senior sales engineers for all the projection at Epson. Um, you can call me that. Sure. Let's go with that. That's you fine. still know your stuff. You know your stuff. It's yeah. you're the smart man. I just manage the team of engineers, so my my knowledge base is going high. Low, 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 low. <laughs> so I have to rely on my smart guys. Well, and a little bit for for me, I so I'm at Rutgers University in New Jersey. Uh, for those of you in this area, it's John McCabe from uh, from Epson. That would be your point oh, yeah. of contact. We're uh, sorry. Make, we, uh, I love John to death, but <laughs> leave yourself. If it's a five minute conversation, leave it 30 minutes. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I say that lovingly because yeah, Epson has been a great supporter of higher ed uh, over uh, over the years. Um, we are an Epson house here at Rutgers. That's that's all we use. Um, we're, we're in the process of switching over from lamp base to uh, laser. Uh, that is all we purchase now. So we're, as we're doing our refresh cycles, that is where we uh, currently are at. And I can vouch for what they were talking about is that we get the demo gear, we get all the support, um, you know, and uh, they've backed every piece of product that has come through our, our, our door. Um, so, you know, I can give you perspective from that endpoint, which is why I wanted to moderate this session because I am big Epson fan uh, here over at Rutgers. So um yeah i can uh, i can leave it to to you guys and uh we'll just let people roll in as they they do so we yeah. appreciate the kind words definitely it's always always good to hear those good things so mm. i'm going to share my screen now here real quick uh, PowerPoint. Share. all right can everyone see it come up mm -hmm. All right, so just jumping into things, um, you know, Epson business projectors, it's uh, something we we're pretty good at um, and project and decision makers continue to choose Epson more than any other brand. The chart there on the left just shows our unit share for the entire projector market for 2021 um, sitting at a 60%, which makes us the number one world leader uh, in in projectors across any business entity, school, university, so on and so forth. Um, and that's really comes down to several key things. One is that, you know, all of our projectors use three LCD technology. That is a technology that we helped to pioneer and developed many, many years ago. Um, and with that, you get great, bright, crisp images full of color um, and vibrancy, uh, which really helps with retention and learning. And it just makes the projectors look really, really good. Um, we also have industry leading service and support. Um, that's kind of you know where Ray and I do help our universities on the back end, but we also have in-house technicians. We've got people who can help spec projects. We've got um, you know entire teams devoted to fixing problems and issues that you may have. Um, so there's that one. Projection technology as a solution. Uh, luckily for us, we do see more and more markets opening up with the use of projection technology. Um, because the units are getting bigger, or the units are getting smaller, but they're getting brighter and more powerful in the transition to laser, it's really opened up a whole new avenue of opportunities for us to um, be able to spec a projector for many different jobs and needs. Um, projectors, obviously, uh, they're much more flexible. They have unlimited image size to a sense. You can have those supersized images um, to create you know, real-to-life great imagery. Maintenance, now that we've switched to the laser, uh, you know, they're virtually maintenance free. We don't have to worry about lamps or switching, um, you know, lamps going down in the middle of the class or anything anymore. And for cost, you know, it's a very, very cost effective solution. When we look at kind of the bread and butter for higher education, that is our PowerLight L series 
fixed lens laser models. You can see on the screen here, we've got several different models ranging from 5,200 lumens up to 7,000 lumens. Um, and they gain you know, various features as you move up through the line. Uh, the L530U is probably the one that I see most often at most of my universities and colleges, um, or the 630 or 730 if they need a little bit more brightness. But with this unit, you know, it's small, compact. It has built-in lens shift. It's going to give you the HDMI out for daisy chaining. It's got built-in wireless and Meerkast uh, HD base T across this entire lineup. So um, really, really important models and kind of the workhorse of, you know, what we see across education. Um, the 7,000 lumen, you know, is unheard of in that size several years ago. You know, if you wanted a 7,000 lumen projector, you're going to have a 30, 40 pound box in order to get that. Um, so it's quite remarkable, I feel, that we've got a 7,000 lumen model in an 18 pound package. Um, and we're seeing it used in, you know, medium sized large lecture halls. We're seeing it utilized in some theaters, um, really spaces where you would have had to move up to an interchangeable lens prior. Um, you know, the job can be accomplished now with this much smaller fixed lens series. One of the other neat things about it is it'll go up to 500 inch in display diagonal, um, which is, you know, a lot of screen real estate to be able to show uh, a big, bright, vibrant image. Um, perfect for most any classroom. We also are increasing the flexibility in the projectors in terms of um, aspect ratio. So we're starting to see a lot more 21.9 interest, 16.6. Uh, and what this allows is, you know, a little more scrunched image, but much wider images. Uh, we're seeing the 21.9 kind of take off in those Zoom and Huddle uh, Teams rooms. Um, so really neat use of applications and the projectors are, you know, capable of doing just that. Some of the other built-in features of this wireless screen sharing, um, it's got built-in mirror cast. You can also do remote uh, collaboration between several of the projectors. So if you've got, you know, one university room who is broadcasting to another, that can all be done natively through the projectors. Um, so pretty simple solution. Uh, all of these also have um, pretty neat design features for easy installation. We've got built-in tools like edge blending, geometric correction, uh, which really allows you to do a lot with these projectors. Like I said earlier, you can daisy chain them out with the HDMI out um, and just you know link multiple ones together. And it allows that extreme flexibility. We're also seeing a growing need for higher resolution. Um, I don't know if anyone on this call can confirm that or wants to comment it, but we are seeing more interest in 4K or 4K equivalent stuff. Um, larger, more detailed screens for fuller classes. Uh, we're seeing more hybrid meeting spaces where they need more and more content on the screen, such as, you know, the audience on one side, the content on another, the chat window running as well. Uh, a lot of that can be handled with higher resolution and much larger images. And then finally, the experiential events where people are really up close to the images and viewing it closely, so they want that higher definition imagery. And with that in mind, we just announced that we are launching three models, three additional models to the PowerLight L series with our 4K enhancement technology. As I said, they will continue alongside the other models that I just showed you, but we'll now have a 5200 lumen and a 7000 lumen that are WUXGA native, but with pixel shift technology, which is the way that a lot of uh, projector manufacturers on the market are achieving the higher resolution. So it's doubling your on-screen resolution um, without the 4K native costs that would be associated with true 4K native projection. This is just a quick look at more of the specs on this lineup. Does that sound um, appealing or interesting to anyone? Have you guys seen requests for 4K or higher resolution imagery? If anyone wants to chime in, we're seeing a little bit more of it. Let's try and monitor the. So say, feel free to unmute and you can you can respond if you'd like. There's only 10 of us in the group, so uh, I don't think we're going to get too out of hand. OK, um, that's fine. And we make up three of them, so we'll keep on yeah. going. Just wanted to make sure it was addressed if anyone was curious. Um, moving into our high brightness pro series, these are our interchangeable lens projectors. So we have three main series available today. They range from 6,000 lumens all the way up to 30,000 lumens now. Um, again, these are all proven three chip, three LCD technology um, for those really bright, crisp images. One of the huge things, uh, hugely beneficial things is the single lens family. So I'll get to it in another slide. 
in a little bit, but we have a single lens family that runs from the 6,000 lumen all the way up to the 20,000 lumen now, um, which really helps for interchangeability if you're, you know, using multiple different size projectors at multiple different places across your campus, uh, you know, odds are that same lens family is going to be able to work. Um, powerful features, we'll get to that in another slide, and then um, the backed by a market leading team, which is part of us on the phone call. The 6,000 lumen to 10,000 lumen range, this is our EVP 1000 and 2010 series. As you can see, we have a 6,000 lumen, and then we have seven, 8,500, and 10,000 lumen, all available in black and white. They are WUXG resolution, and they have that 4K enhancement technology built into them already. Um, very small, very compact for the amount of brightness that you're getting out of these projectors. Moving up to the next series is the 13,000 to 20,000 lumen. We have a 13,000, a 16,000, and a 20,000 lumen option, um, both available in black and white. This series was just released, uh, I'm going to say last summer, last fall is when it was announced. Um, really big deal for, I guess it was last summer because we had them at Infocom is when we kind of unveiled them for the first time. Um, but a really, really big deal for us. This is a very small chassis at 55 pounds to be able to have 20,000 lumens coming out of something that small. It was the world's smallest and lightest 20,000 lumen projector. Um, our 10,000 lumen was the same story. Uh, so just really allowing additional flexibility in terms of where this projector can be installed or what you can do with it, whether you're moving it around from site to site, um, you know, it, it helps to, to not break your back when, when moving 20,000 lumens now. This new system had a lot of engineering advancements. Um, so for the first time ever, we introduced liquid cooling systems. So these are filterless in design. This is the 13, 16, and 20. Um, and they have internal liquid cooling that helps to move the heat away from the critical areas. Um, it's a totally optimized design structure. So it is very lightweight, as I mentioned, um, very compact for its size. Uh, and you can see here, just kind of comparing it against both ours and another one on the market. Our old 20,000 lumen, which is on the left, we are now 64% smaller and 50% lighter than our previous one, um, which is great to see. You know, as this technology advances, it's going to continue to get smaller and smaller, and it's getting more affordable. Um, the price difference between our old 20 and our current 20, um, you know, is very, very advantageous for school districts and universities who are always looking to save money. Um, so we think it is a very competitive solution out in the market. The single compatible lens family, where this really speaks to power is it's not just for this generation. It's for the generation before it. It's for the generation before it. And it's for the generation before it. Like we have had pretty much this single lens family for four generations now. So if you were using our old Pro G7000 series on campus, which was an older lamp-based projector, those lenses will probably still work with this new EBPU series. So when you think about, you know, longevity and having to upgrade projectors, it's great to be able to just upgrade the projector and not have to think about the lenses. Um, we have a very flexible lineup in terms of an ultra short throw all the way to the long throw, which really allows you to be able to hit any screen distance in any size that you could ever imagine. The 30,000 lumen that I mentioned on the prior slide does have its own set of lenses to it. Um, so just keep that in mind, but to have it from six to 20 is pretty advantageous. This here, we just like to show that ultra short throw lens. It's kind of unique in the market and that it looks like a snorkel, um, but this lens sells projectors. And I always tell that to people like, you will create things with this lens that you A, never thought possible and B, will cause you the need to basically buy the projector because of what it can be capable of. You can do very, very large images from very close to the screen with this 0.35 ultra short throw. Um, and it's available now across our six to 20,000 lumen range. Um, so very, very powerful lens. Some of the other innovative advanced features that are in this EVPU series, we have a new Pixaline external camera, um, which is uh, 
has a lot of really neat advanced functionality built in. It can help with stacking assist, tiling assist, auto color calibration, screen matching, edge blending, um, just some really neat things that you know before you would have had to manually do. Now this camera can assist with that, uh, which really decreases the install time um, if you're working on a large project. Another thing to reduce install time, um, I think we'll see this you know move into more units eventually, but this series does have NFC built in. So if anyone's not familiar with that, that's near field communication. And what you can do is uh, basically download the settings to your phone in an Epson app, and you can provision different settings to projectors while they're off and still in the boxes as they come into you. So if you're deploying, you know, 10, 15, 20 of these units across campus over a summer, you can now do that, you know, written through this app that we have created uh, to make it that much easier to deploy the, the projectors. This is just another look at that pixel line camera, um, and this just shows that it can be used both forward facing and rear facing with the different mounts that we have set up for it. Um, finally, just some of the built in edge blending tools for super wide displays. Uh, you can create stunning edge blend displays without the need for additional equipment with these EVP series. If you wanted more information on um, some of the installation techniques or just more information in general, we do have uh, epson.com slash advanced projector installation tools available for you to be able to go to. Um, it can also link to YouTube where we do several different tutorials. Um, our engineering team you know, can walk you through different processes and different things that you're trying to achieve. Um, so really a helpful uh, area to, to gain more information and knowledge. Finally, the last product we wanted to talk about just because we introduced it three weeks ago is our extreme short throw projector. Um, so we do currently have short throw, ultra short throw um, in our, our portable series. We are now introducing this extreme short throw projector. So you can essentially get an 80 inch image from one inch away from the wall. Um, this was developed, you know, primarily for our home cinema market. That's a market that took off a lot during COVID as everyone was at home and, and revamping their home theaters. Uh, but we started, you know, talking about this to a lot of higher education end users, and they definitely felt there was a need for it. So we wanted to bring a commercial model to the market, and that's the L810E. Um, it has a 4K resolution, um, dual built-in speakers, Wi-Fi, easy to install. We are coming out with a wall mount for it. Um, so it will be able to traditionally be hung above a board or above a wall, um, or in the picture on the right, you can see that it's on a table just projecting up. Finally, I kind of mentioned it before, you know, what Ray and I do and what the rest of our team does. We've got several reps across the entire country. Um, you have a rep if you are at a college or a university or a school. There is someone that is dedicated to help you. Um, they're dedicated to help you get the best pricing, to get the best uh, you know, the best products for whatever solution you need, they are there for you. Um, you know, one of the things we brought to market 20 some years ago now is we developed this Brighter Futures Education Pricing Program. The rest of the market kind of followed with their own programs, but we said, let's be upfront, let's put our pricing, you know, out to the street. So at any given time, you can look at any of those, you know, projectors that I just showed you, get an idea of what the cost is gonna be. Um, you know, get in touch with one of us, have a private toll-free tech support line if you do have issues because you're, you know, an institution, a part of Brighter Futures. Um, and then the warranty on it, you know, we, a lot of our laser projectors in the fixed lens series and portable series are now five-year warranty. Uh, we moved it from three to five when we went from lamp to laser. The interchangeable lens, uh, the warranty varies a little bit. We can get into that if you had specific questions, but just know that we are here for you. That's all I had on the slides. I know it was a lot to take in. I apologize. I word vomited for a while, but had a lot to cover. Lots of good stuff. Well, thank you very much, Cody. That that was great. Um, before I mean, I'll we'll leave it open. Is are there any questions from anybody? Doo -doo. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. As an email comes in on my end, and it chimes through everybody. <laughs> no, you're good. Well, I will say um, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Now, if if they if somebody in this group has a favorite integrator or distributor that they use, but they don't they don't have the Brighter Futures package as part of that, it's easy for them to add that on to their their piece, right? 
Yeah, it would just be a conversation with us. Because you're all education customers, you are essentially in the Brighter Futures program. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we'll work on the back end to make sure that you're buying from who you want to and you're getting the uh, advantages of that program, for sure. And there's always, uh, I know from my perspective, John is always very good about sending out with the next promotion, whether it's in projectors or if it's in dot cams or whatever it is, he's been, he's always very good. So, you know, like sometimes there's a free, like there was a free lens promotion that is or is just wrapped up, you know, so it's usually around this time of year, which works out very nicely for us as uh, in higher ed, because this is when we're putting out our POs for our, uh, our summer projects. So, yeah, that's great. One other thing to note, um, just because every meeting I'm in, it seems like it comes up, is availability. Uh, so we are probably 70% stocked, meaning we've got 70% of models kind of in stock and ready to go. I would say 15% are three to six weeks, and then 15% are um, kind of that April, May, June timeframe. So we do have stock. We would love to help work on summer projects and get those going. We're not in the situation we were in you know, over the last year, two years, three years with COVID and supply chain management issues. Um, so we're ready to help you. Ray, is there anything you wanted to add or Mike? No, I think you covered it pretty well, Cody. So, uh, you know, it's, um, you know, the, the lineup, I mean, the investment we've made over the last two to three years is, has really been um, uh, great. And it's now reflected in a lot of the uh, slides that Cody just went over. So, in addition to taking care of you know your your standard classroom needs, we're we're really well positioned to uh, go after a lot of the emerging trends uh, that we're seeing in the market. You know whether it's immersive solutions, the high resolution needs, um, mobile solutions that you know uh, extreme short throw can either be wall mounted or put into a cart and uh, and use as a mobile solution. Um, you know, larger image size, uh, and really done at a very affordable price point. So uh, I think the lineup's a, a, about as strong as I've ever seen it on our side. And uh, so we're, we're really bullish on uh, projector technology and uh, really look forward to working with customers on uh, unique applications in addition to just what you're doing in a, in a standard classroom. Right. You know, Cody is a great resource, Ray is a great resource, uh, but I want to let you know that Epson does have a whole suite of technological tools, um, state of the art that can help you in your designs and help you come to the right solution. Uh, and we're always ready and willing to help uh, in order to do that. So please reach out if you ever have anything. Hey Mike, could you touch quickly on our consultant initiative as well? That might be something that's of interest to, uh, to the guys here on, on how we're approaching that market. Um, sure. Let's, so do any of you use consultants to help you design the entire building or the district or individual classrooms, or if that's done in house, um, kind of curious as to what you guys do. Well, for, for us, if it's a, if it's an individual classroom or like during our summer refreshes, it's all on us. Um, the only time we ever really work with a consultant, if it's, if it's a brand new construction and they need, like when we usually go out for an integrator then to get the work done. So they'd rather have a designer who comes up with what it looks like, but it's all based on our stand. Oh, well, what will be our standards? Got it. Got it. That's kind of how thing? we are. That's how we are too. Sorry. I mean, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a new, if it's a new build, if it's a design build, granted we haven't done a build in, oh, uh, the last building that we did, a, we did a build on opened in the beginning of 2019. And part of the construction project had a consultant involved. Um, so the, the specialty spaces, we used a consultant and they, Basically what it was is that we had our standards and they took our standards and put that into what they put in as their spec. The classrooms were not part of what the consultant did. And that's just, I mean, we have our spec, we have our standards for our classrooms and we have an integrator that we've, that we've worked with for a long time for all of our classrooms. And we're right now we're probably about 50% transit. We finished 
the complete transition to Epson this this current year, and we're now probably about fifty percent laser and fifty percent. We're probably not probably just about fifty percent laser, and then the balance is still lamp projectors. Got it. And on a side note, Mark, you and I have met, right? You've been yeah, to we our have. EIC program. Same with Bo. I'm looking at all these names, and it's been <laughs> four or five years, but I know you all. So yeah, it's it's, it's been a few I years, but yeah, we've met. Yeah, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Mark, again, thank you for that input. Um, how do you guys select these consultants? Is it just picking a name out of a head? Is it frame of reference from other in districts around you, or? I'm actually not entirely sure how the the consultants get picked. Uh, I know we've had maybe two projects with the same consultant group and they're based mm -hmm. out of Baltimore, I think. So somehow they get attached <laughs> with like the architect and yeah. so, um, okay. so the, the, the difficulty with that is that the projects are infrequent. So sometimes they sure. forget about the standards or they have their own ideas mm -hmm. and things that want to get done. And so, I mean, that seems to be, but they, they, from a projection standpoint, they always know that we want to use Epson. So right on. at least we got that going for us. In, in our case, <laughs> it was, oh, sorry about that. Um, in our case, it was that because it was our theater and the two most technical people on the project were myself and our technical director in the theater area, um, he knew the company that was that he didn't know the consultant himself but he knew the company that we had hired and they were out of chicago and they were selected because what happened was so we've over a number of years re so of the three buildings that have been rebuilt in our fine arts area theater was a tear down and rebuild Music and art, basically what they did was they gutted the buildings and rebuilt them. And both of those, there was no consultant involved. And it was a, it was, those were both done prior to my arrival at McAllister 10 years ago. And it was too cozy of a relationship between some of my predecessors and a previous integrator. And there was a lot of shortcuts that were taken. There were a lot of things that were done that shouldn't have been done. And there were a lot of, um, well, let's just say that the in, the integrator had a lot of ideas and didn't really listen to the ultimate end users on the product. I mean, I'm not, yes, I'm in, yes, technically I'm an end user because I mean, we all refer to end user, in-house integrator, things of that sort, but ultimately the end users are the people who are using the classrooms. And we had a lot of issues where those people were the ones who weren't listened to. And so we took a little different approach when it came time to doing our theater area. Got it, got it. That makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate sure. it. That was the only questions I had on, on consultants. And, you know, um, we do work carefully with them in terms of like our design capabilities. They'll bring us specs and we'll put the projector in, we'll show its light pass so we know that it's an accurate, no one's gonna be blasted with light by walking here. So. Um, the point being, we're looking at consultants as another way to kind of get the message out there for projection uh, to be in education. So if you guys um, have consultants you'd like us to reach out to that you've been working with and may not know the Epson lineup, we'd be happy to talk to them too, Mark. So stuff like that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No, that's all I pretty much have, unless you guys have any additional questions or anything. Um, like I said, we're just happy to be here, happy to be sponsored, and hope to continue it moving forward. Anything else from the uh, the, the group out there? Bo's hiding somewhere. I don't, I don't know. Oh, oh he Bo's just, gone. He's, oh. <laughs> I was oh, hoping Bo would come on camera. I'm like, I, I just Bo in somewhere else. Right I on cue. <laughs> I saw him two weeks ago, so I've had. Cody, I've had you're, the, you're the Cody. You're the rep for the Midwest now. I am, yeah. So I live in Northwest. You New took York. over for Jennifer. Um, no, not quite. Uh, okay. I'll be taking over for John Harris. Oh, um, okay. So I don't know if you've had much communication with him. 
Well, um, I had a lot of communication with John over the years, and I had oh. actually prior to him, I knew um, I knew Amy Crutch Ward. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, Amy. Uh, Amy, you know, used to cover a lot of that region. I came yep. in about seven years ago, but I've only covered Minnesota for about the last three, but I've been working um, a lot with like the University of Minnesota and a couple other schools and then a lot of K-12 accounts. So yeah, uh, starting essentially now, I cover all of higher education for the six states that I cover. And that's Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Kansas, Missouri. So <laughs> just get to enjoy being out on the road when it's not snowing and crazy, you know? <laughs> right. But yeah, I definitely reach out to me. Let me know what you need. Um, we can send in any kind of gear or help you with anything question wise or that's what I'm here sure. for now. I just haven't reached out to to meet you yet officially. That was coming in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> oh, sure. Bo came back. I think he heard us talking about it. I don't know. Were burning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. I'll see him again soon, I'm sure. Nope, nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Staying like a strong you know, I can at least oh. hey, there he is. Oh. Hey now. Hi, buddy. He coaxed him out. He coaxed him out. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the recording so we don't put all this out on the because people don't need to see the, the after stuff. So let Probably me better. Probably yeah, better. the after party.